earliest fashion memories is reading an article about things that you should and should not wear or style or do. And I certainly started to believe a lot of that over the years, but most recently I've been breaking a lot of those and reflecting back on bad advice and dressing rules that I no longer believe, things that I've freed myself from. So in today's video, I want to share that. I want to go over some of the things that we hear a lot that I find to be no longer relevant and in fact can be better for your style if you ignore them. So let's get started. So the first dressing rule that I no longer believe is that leggings are difficult to style and or not chic. This is something that I remember seeing everywhere a couple years ago and I definitely perpetuated this myself and I would avoid wearing them and if I was going to style them, I put so much thought and energy into them and honestly it was a little bit restrictive. I found it to be restrictive in so many different areas and really starting to transfer into policing and that's not at all how I view fashion and it's not something I want to encourage. So I've been trying to style leggings differently myself and bring them into my wardrobe. I have a few pairs like I'm sure most people do and I've been wearing them not just to the gym but also styling them in other ways. They're great for travel, they're really comfortable and specifically as street style and inspiration has gotten a little bit more casual, you can find so many great outfits. So I'm going to link some down below for you. This next dressing rule that I no longer believe is that classics should be simple and you only need one of each. This came about as I started developing my style and doing capsule wardrobe specifically and it served me really well for a while to have one white shirt, one pair of black pants, etc, etc. But as my style has evolved and I've figured out how I want to represent myself and what I feel my best in, I've been able to pinpoint some closet staples that I can then change up a little bit. So taking a white shirt, for example, I can do a couple versions of those. I can have the versatility of the white shirt, but change the silhouette, the cut, the size of it, and how I'm able to style it. And it gives me so much variety. And specifically with pants, I started doing this because I had a very specific style of pant that I would go for, and I was cutting myself off to other options because I had this arbitrary number in my mind, one pair of black pants, one pair of jeans. So what I've been doing instead is applying that to those as well and finding a slightly oversized or longer silhouette, something with pleats, something with a higher rise. And it's given me so much more freedom within my style and again, versatility within my closet. I can create different combinations and rely on those pieces that I can mix and match, but change them so that I don't get bored, which is really important for me because having that expression and the variety within that expression is something that I was missing. So similarly, the next dressing rule that I no longer believe is that there are certain things everyone should have in their closet. So specifically those lists like 30 things to have before you're 30 or five things every stylish person has, there are definitely things I've contributed to. And that comes about because when I first started my style, I remember seeing these lists and thinking, this is such a great starting point. It took a lot of the guesswork out of things and gave me a framework to work within. But like most things, the problem came when I ignored the personalization and I didn't customize it. So I think using those lists as a framework is a great starting point. But when you focus in too much on those and finding the perfect trench coat that everyone needs or the pair of jeans everyone needs, you ignore what's actually going to be working for you and you don't establish or develop your style. So what I've been doing now is taking that framework, but then looking at my outfits and being honest about what I'm missing to make it feel like me. The next dressing rule that I no longer believe is if you haven't worn something in a year, you should get rid of it or declutter it. I remember specifically when I first started sharing my style on the internet, capsule wardrobes were really popular and I was doing capsules and I found it to be such a great way to develop what I liked and really start to focus in on finding my uniform and how things can mix and match. I had to get creative. And when I was doing all of that, I kept seeing recommendations for decluttering and getting rid of things. But as I was going through it myself, I remember thinking my mom has things that she's had for many years and they cycle back in and out. So 
should I really be getting rid of them? A year doesn't seem long enough. And as I've been doing this for the last couple years, I've decided that a year definitely isn't long enough to determine whether or not you're going to love something. And what I've been doing now is looking at a piece and how special it is, what it means to me, how much I truly love it, and if it has the possibility to come back into fashion or be something that I want to be re-inspired by later on. So I no longer put that time frame, but instead my framework is do I love it? And it's been a lot better for me to look at my closet that way. I also find it to be helpful because it discourages the constant um, removal from your closet just to bring new things in. And instead, I'm forced to be really careful about my purchases because I know that I'm not going to get rid of a bunch of stuff to make room. So it has to be something I'll genuinely wear and love. The next dressing rule that I no longer believe is that dark denim is always the way to go. This comes from, again, those beautifully curated lists of those wardrobe essentials. And I remember distinctly dark denim being on all of them because you can dress it up, you can dress it down. The dark wash is inherently a little bit Bit more formal and i know i've advocated for it as well i have some in my own closet and i love it for those reasons but what i found especially in my own style is that i reach for my mid-wash denim a lot more and i think that comes down to the formality the dark wash feels almost too formal sometimes and it's it tells a very specific story versus the mid-wash i find to be a lot more versatile and flexible i can use it as a base for a lot of different stories so I just reach for it more so it really circles back to that customization and making sure that you're looking at your closet honestly and I again I wear my dark denim but my mid wash is definitely what I go for again and again and again so rather than fixating on the dark denim pieces and finding those in different styles I've been doing that with my mid wash and I'm a lot happier with the results because I know I love them I know I wear them a lot and I can get inspiration for styling from not only right now, but 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, and I'm able to use all of that to influence my own style journey. And last but not least is that if a pair of pants has belt loops, you need to wear a belt. <laughs> I remember seeing this everywhere. And again, when I first started thinking about my style and trying to figure out what I liked, I followed this really strictly. I thought this is a definite dressing rule. And if my pair of pants or my jeans had visible belt loops, I would put a belt on. But what I've discovered again through experimentation and freeing myself from these obligations that someone else is telling me to do, I've been able to really focus in on styling and not every outfit needs a belt. And so I was kind of forcing it and making it something that I had to follow, even though no one really was making me except for myself. So it comes back to again, and being strategic about your style, trying to free yourself from the noise and picking things out that truly work for you and being authentic to what you love. And if you like how something looks, wear it. And if you don't like how something looks, then don't wear it. And that's going to come through authentically and how you feel in your outfit. So for me, I have a lot of belts and I really love belts, but I no longer feel like every outfit with belt loops needs to have a belt. And it's given me a lot of flexibility in my jewelry and all of that. And then also I'm able to wear my belts in things that don't have belt loops. So over a sweater or a blazer. And again, it just gives me flexibility and a lot more fun. So I hope that these were interesting for you. I have more that I can definitely uh, find and then share with you if you're interested. So if you liked this, let me know and I can definitely make another one. And I would love to know if there are any dressing rules that you yourself have freed yourself from. Is there something that maybe you were taught growing up, but you no longer follow it? or there's something that you see a lot of other people do, but it just doesn't work for you. Definitely let me know. And like always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Have a great day.